Glory to God. Now, every day of your life, um, you decide ultimately the levels of the anointing that you take in. Because every single day, there's mantles that Jesus has scheduled for you. There's anointings, there's mindsets, there's thoughts that you are supposed to think. There's emotions that you're supposed to receive. And there's decisions that you're supposed to make. Every single day, God has a food, a soul food scheduled. Soul food. Soul food. And, and wisdom is like the collard greens of your soul. Every day you have soul food scheduled for you, for you to eat, for you to digest. And your whole job is to manage your mind in a degree that you don't let the soul food get cold and let flies get it, but you protect it, preserve it, and you eat it when God is serving it to you. Don't let what Jesus has prescribed for your soul get away from your, your grasp, your grip, your grab. You got to take a hold of it. Don't let it leave um, the possession of your reach. You got to aggressively take a hold of it. And... If your mind is exposed to things, reports, conversations, and you not in the spirit realm, it could destroy and demolish how God polish you. It'll affect you greatly. If you hear something, you hear a report, you feel a certain way. Or there's a decision that, that, that is uh, presented to you like an option. And it's not from God. And, and in the midst of that, it's like you're not in the spirit. It can destroy you. Saints, in my, my vehicle, my vehicle, I, I have like a low riding fast car. I have a low rider fast car. So the low rider got a part on it. And the part, because it's a low rider, it broke off or it was dragging. So when I would try to drive that car, it it would um, drag, right? So I found out that the car didn't even need that part, sidebar. Um, when you talk to mechanics on the phone, they want to act iffy up. <laughs> but if you if you say if they see if they see a pretty woman or son, you see how they change. <laughs> you be you be asking how, how much is it? Uh, we're not doing all of that. Just bring the car in. Just bring the car in. Praise God. <laughs> now, I found out that the car did not need the part. The car didn't need the part, but it was on the car. But it was actually causing trouble with having that part on there. Now look at this. You have to know which Parts on your spiritual vehicle, your life vehicle, that you don't even need. That if you don't take it off, it's going to cause you trouble in the future. It's on you, but it doesn't mean that it's supposed to be in you. You got to know how to break it off. As a woman, you got to overcome the spirit of Eve. As a man, you got to overcome the spirit of Adam. The spirit of Adam is false dominion. The spirit of Eve is false direction. False assumption. You caught that? 
The spirit of Adam is false dominion. The spirit of Eve is false assumption, false direction. Every woman got overcome that. As a woman, you got overcome the spirit of Eve. As a man, you got overcome the spirit of Adam. If you overcome both of these uh, spirit realms, you'll never have another day of issues again. Every day, the only attack that you're going to receive as a woman is from the spirit of Eve. As a man, the only spirit you're going to receive is from the spirit of Adam. And both of these spirits are jealous of the new creation. So... Even though you think you're anointed, you still got to put in the work of casting down imaginations and high things. Because those imaginations are going to come no matter what realm in the spirit you're at. Saints, you can do something glorious for God and be in a climax. And two hours later, you can be in a deep depression. Because... The ability to sustain is more powerful than the ability to receive. Huh? You caught that? That's a deep wisdom door. The ability to sustain is more powerful than the ability to receive. Because if I receive it, after a while, it can become null. It can become lost, casualized, and I can lose it. It will become easy for me to abort what God has given me to carry if I never adapt to the ability to sustain. The ability to sustain is way more powerful than the ability to receive. Because many have received, but they did not sustain. So they lost what was once received. Think about that. They lost what was once received. Saints, Adam received, but he didn't sustain. The woman received, but she didn't sustain. You got to understand that Adam was both male and female. They had one name. We show you that oneness. When you got oneness with the anointing, a man of God, you carry his identity. That's why the demon told the sons of Sheba, Beniva, Askeba, Asteba, by her, as a new weaver. Barney, get off this line. <laughs> Barney, get out of here. <laughs> Barney used to be taken. Baby Bop Bop used to be on a song. Do the baby Bop Bop. Say, sometimes I used to watch Barney with my eyes crossed. I was just watching it to waste time because I didn't want to go to school. Do the baby Bop 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 Bop. I was like this. Since I had some glasses that I didn't want to wear. So I, I used to make sure when I go to PE, I faked it like I, like I broke it. I would always cause a scene. Man, you don't want none of this. You don't. Ah, ah, my teacher, my glasses broke. My glasses broke right here. You saw it. As soon as I went, go cross them up. Straight out of Navis in them. Rebox. 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 Re, Rebox. I made sure. I made sure I got it right. I had my scene, everything prepared. Made sure I got it real good. Every single time. Work for my grace. Work for my grace. 
my mother, I don't know how I did it. One time I talked to her into getting me some, uh, some, uh, what you call it? Some glasses with, um, some glasses with, uh, dark lenses. So I was in my class with some glasses with some dark lenses. Man, the teacher was jealous and everything, but she couldn't do it. One time she made a complaint. Said, he wearing shades in my class. Nah, these prescriptionals. Ho I mean, uh, 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 Miss Hofer. Miss Hofer. Excuse me. Uh, I had uh, my, my, my windpipe was interrupted just now. Hofer. I finished it. That's what I did. So, Saints, I used to be in class like this here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and the teacher didn't know I was sleeping. God was like this here. Saints, when she started talking about we came from monkeys. Uh, <sighs> Mr. Holmes, what's your answer? Uh, let me tell you something. I believe that the curriculum is is uh, is connected to the uh, the axis of the earth. <laughs> you know, when you talk out your head, you start saying stuff that don't make no sense. No, I believe that the curriculum, I ask them tomorrow when we get into donuts. I believe the curriculum is connected to the axis of the earth. It is tilted, just like a wig. It's tilted. It had nothing to do <laughs> with the class at all. If you're going to move in different degrees of the glory of God, you got to have discipline, number one. Discipline is so important because discipline means that I done set spiritual goals. And my condition, my feelings, my mind is not going to betray me out of those spiritual goals. It's not going to stop me. See, saints, before I started demonstrating the power of God, I had already dreamed it. So I used to have my action figures inside the room. I used to line them up and I used to demonstrate on the action figures as a little boy, literally. Used to hit the dog, fell to the ground, pick them back up. Whoosh, pick them back up. I was with my action figure dogs. All of them got healed from their sickness. One action figure had glaucoma. <laughs> Healed the glaucoma completely. But see, I had spiritual goals. <laughs> I had spiritual goals. Spiritual goals. Is an entrance to effectiveness and excellence. If you have spiritual goals... God would anoint you with inspiration to get it done. If you're going to enter into the glory of God, you got to have discipline. And spiritual goals solidify discipline. Spiritual goals solidify discipline. Uh, number one, you got to have discipline. Number two, you got to have um, zeal. You got to have zeal. And if you have zeal, is is a form of passion, diligence. You got to have an excitement about Jesus. If Jesus don't excite you, you're going to fall off very soon. If he don't excite you, you're going to lose your position. And that go for any place where God plants you. Saints, before Adam ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil... What God told him had to become disinteresting. What the serpent was telling the woman became more interesting to her than what she heard God said previously. So saints, here's what you got to catch with discipline and zeal. These are going to manage you when Satan presents something to you that seems like it's even better than what God already said. Discipline and zeal. Because you're going to have discipline, self-control, and excitement, zeal, for the Lord. So when the devil presents something to you 
that is opposite to what the Lord already presented to you, you'll have these realms already surrounding you. If you're going to step into the glory, uh, the glory of God, increasing your personal anointing and stepping into the glory of God, you must learn how to decree. Because decreeing creates routes for your mind. That's a wisdom door. If you're taking notes, write that down. Decreeing creates routes for your mind. Your decree is creating a path for you to laugh. Your decree is creating a path for you to laugh. I'm giving you wisdom. These are wisdom doors. Your decreeing is deciding how deep you're seeing in the spirit. Because your words are your world. They are divine reports that produce divine mindsets continuously in a day. <clears throat> you got to learn how to decree because your decreeing is going to direct your emotions into joy. Your decreeing is going to direct your emotions into joy. So you got to learn how to decree. Your decreeing is going to shut down moments of weakness. If you're taking us, write that down. Your decreeing is going to shut down moments of weakness. And your decreeing is going to embarrass the hour of temptation. Write that down. Those are powerful wisdom doors that change your life. Your decree is going to embarrass moments, uh, uh, the hour of temptation. Your decree is going to shut down moments of weakness and your decree is going to uh, embarrass the hour of temptation. Saints, you ever wonder why will Satan flee from you? Because you embarrass him. See, when you got an established heart and you set your mind on things above, Colossians chapter 3, and you walking in the spirit, you embarrass the devil because you showing him that you're not excited, you're not ignited, and you're not inviting anything that's toxic from his kingdom. And that embarrasses him. Saints, let me just tell you this. The locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, you... Enter into wealth when you embarrass financial demons with your sowing. You caught that? You step into wealth when you embarrass financial demons with your giving, with your sowing. Your sowing is what embarrasses every financial demon and you shut down the army. If you take notes, write this down. The, the army of Satan, rather. If you take notes, write this down. When your arm is sewing, you break the arms of the army of financial demons. There's a reason why money coming. Because you done embarrassed the whole satanic kingdom that was stopping your wealth. Bitterness could keep you in poverty. Because if you bitter, that means that you can't trust nobody in the future. And if you can't trust nobody in the future, that means that you can't believe the prophet. And if you can't believe the prophet, that means that you can't prosper God's way. So you see how demons are families that produce your failure. Demons are families. You caught that? Demons are families that produce your failure. Demons are families that produce your failures. So bitterness will link up with poverty because in the midst of bitterness, you can't trust nobody and you can't trust a prophet. So you can't prosper. God's way, you'll have to become a thief. 
And being a thief does not bring you godly relief. You're still going to be tormented with what you obtain. You'll never meet a peaceful thief. Because a thief is always looking to who's going to find out that they're a thief. Or who's going to come thief what they thief because you reap what you sow. Somebody asked me one time I was in public. They said, wow, how you got on this jury? You're not scared that you get robbed? I said, oh, no, no, I'm not scared that I get robbed. Because if I got robbed, I robbed a the robber. They said, Did you, you say what? Moving along. <laughs> one time I was, in, I was inside a jury store. For you slow folk. How you going to rob me and I own everything? I got the power to get it back in a minute. Saints, as I stand in the presence of God, I done had over, in my lifetime, I think I've had over three guns pointed at me point blank. And all of them either jammed or it didn't, it didn't work. Over three times in my life that I can remember. <clears throat> As I stand in the presence of God, in, in both uh, 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 all uh, uh, scenarios, the gun did not, it, it couldn't go for. What I'm saying is, when you have true prosperity and true wealth, there are uh, cherubims with flaming swords guarding you. Now, don't think for one minute that I'm not going to have my mask men at my meeting. I'm going to have my deep squad up. Shoo. Yeah, the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference, we're going to be strapped down. So, so I, I'm far from stupid. This 2019. No, nah, I, I don't need nothing. This 2019. I'm going to have my big old gangsters with me. <laughs> Natural gangsters, spiritual gangsters. What? <laughs> Says my, my security is so powerful. Well, my security, you know, they big old men, but like they got a soft spot to them. You know, because they be like, Prophet, when when, when, when we going to meet up? When, when, when we won't we work for you? So some of them, some of them said, could we work for you full time again? We're just... We'll just lay down our life and just follow you. Ain't that powerful? <clears throat> Decreeing is powerful. Learn to decree. Because when you decree things, you're planting your mind in the garden of God. You're planting in your mind in the spirit. Learn to decree. When you're decreeing things... You're shutting down all satanic activity that has been scheduled for your mind, present and futuristically. Learn the power of the decree. When you're decreeing things, you're telling Jesus that you are not going to be lazy about your authority. You release authority when you decree. Now, let me just say this. Deuteronomy, uh, oh no, Job chapter 22, 28 says, if you decree a thing, it shall be established. Saints, I'm going to be teaching you about this um, very strong this year. Because you're supposed to be a manifesting spirit. You are a sowing spirit. You are a decreeing spirit. You are a manifesting spirit. You are a wealthy spirit. Somebody write that down. That's powerful. You are a wealthy spirit. You are riches. You are the power of God unto salvation. Do you know why Jesus used you to preach the gospel of people? Because you are the power of God unto salvation. If you deny Jesus, you deny yourself because you are supposed to be Jesus to someone else. You wasn't created to be human. You came from God through human to come back into God. You'll catch that later. 
You came from God through human to come back into God. See, Jesus came from the God realm through the human realm and stepped right back into the God realm when he was on the earth. You came from riches through poverty to step right back into riches. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 says that Jesus through, uh, uh, through the poverty, he made you rich. So you came from riches through the poverty to step right back into riches. Oh my God. Oh my God. Rarada you came from God in there through earth in there to step right back into God in there where you got limitless money you got unlimited money you got unlimited finances you came from perfection through imperfection to step back into perfection you came from virtue to go through Eve to step right back into your virtue. You went from dominion to go through Adam to step right back into your dominion. You went from joy to go through sorrow to step right back into your joy. You, are, you went from the mountain to go through the valley to step right back into the mountain. Increasing your anointing. 